and welcome to this week's installment of Grade 3 Social Studies. Today we will be jumping into the Social Studies materials for the week of June 8th. Can you believe it's June already? You're almost in fourth grade. This is crazy. My name is Mr. Crispins and I'll be your teacher for the next few minutes. In preparation for our work today, please make sure you have accessed your Social Studies materials for the week of June 8th, uh, whether that be digital or the print resources. And if you don't have access to your device right now, just grab a sheet of paper to follow along. Let's get started. So we have studied a lot in social studies this year. We have compared different continents and we have practiced reading like a historian. And for our last two lessons of the year, we are gonna focus on a very important topic and concept, and that's personal financial literacy. Financial literacy are our habits and our practices around spending money. And our objective today is that we will explore what motivates individuals or people to choose to spend or save in order to determine the benefits and drawbacks of making financial decisions. Before we jump into this lesson today, let's just break down our objective a bit. Today, we're going to look at what motivates individuals or people like us to spend or save money. Now, when we're saying the word motivate, what we're really thinking about is what will encourage us to act. And then today we are also going to look for what encourages us to spend or save money. Then we're gonna determine the benefits or drawbacks of making a financial decision. Benefits are good things. And when we reference drawbacks, we can think of the cost of making the decision. For example, if I stay up too late uh, the night before a big test, I might benefit from getting to watch that show that I really wanted to see but the drawback to that decision or the cost would be that I might not do well on that assignment. But let's start talking about financial literacy. All right, so to jump off today, let's imagine that it's your birthday and you just received a hundred dollars from your friends and family members as gifts. You definitely and obviously have some pretty awesome friends and family. Now, what would you do with your money? What would you spend it on? How much would you save for later? Take a minute on that sheet of paper uh, to respond to these questions. If you're accessing this digitally as a digital lesson, you can find this discussion question in the discussion area. Take just a minute. Okay, now I can't have you sharing class with me, but I'm wondering what you wrote down. And I'm wondering if you may have been like me when I was a kid. I would have purchased things like a new video game, maybe got a new bike or bike parts, or I loved fishing, so I might have gotten a new fishing rod. But you might have wrote down other things like skateboards and new shoes or clothes, and maybe you wrote down something completely different, and that's completely okay we each can make our own financial decisions. Each day we make decisions, and we are making financial decisions when we make choices involving money. If we received money for our birthday, we would wanna have, make a decision to spend or save. Spending is when we purchase goods or services within our community uh, with our money. Goods are pretty much anything you can buy and take home with you or touch. Services are things you pay for, like going to a movie theater or getting your hair cut. Savings is when we keep money to spend later. Sometimes we might have a savings goal, and a savings goal might be something that takes a bit longer time to reach. For example, if I was saving up to buy a new bike because it was more expensive, it would just take me a little bit longer to get that money. If I go to the store, I can choose to buy a pack of, let's say, Pokemon cards, or I can save my money to buy a bigger Lego toy later. This is a choice to either spend or save. The Lego toy, in that case, would be my savings goal. People spend money almost every day. They buy food at grocery stores, they buy toys and other things at shopping malls or strip malls, and sometimes people buy things that are what we call needs. 
and other things they buy that are called wants. Needs are things that people must have. People need food to eat every day. They need clothing to keep themselves warm. They need shelter or a place to sleep, and they also need water. Now, if needs are things we have to have, we might also have to have these other things. I know I love iced tea, but that's not a need. Wants are things that people can live without. Toys, video games, and candy are fun to have, and it might, might, might be nice to have those uh, special new shoes with a name brand like Nike or Under Armour, but people don't need them to survive. Each of those would be considered a want. But needs and wants can sometimes be hard to tell apart. People need healthy food to stay well. They need to eat fruits and vegetables. A candy bar is an example of food that people may want, but a candy bar is not a need. There's one more vocabulary term that gets thrown around when we're talking about financial literacy that we really just make, need to make sure we have a good grasp on, and that's called income. We have to talk about how do we get our money. Money that is received is called income, and we earn or receive income by doing different things. Adults may receive money or income by working at their job. They might have investments where they put money into the stock market. They might also have their own job or sell things that they have, they have made. Each of those are considered income. Children can have an income too. Do you have a weekly allowance or weekly chores? Sometimes a family may give money to their kids for an allowance. An allowance is a certain amount of money they receive each week. Here's an example. I have three boys at home. Their ages are eight, four, and three. And each week, I give them each an allowance based on their age. They receive one quarter for each year old they are. So my three-year-old Ben receives three quarters because he's three. And my four-year-old Adam receives four quarters because he's four. And my eight-year-old receives eight quarters or $2 because he's eight. This is their allowance. They can choose to save it or to spend it as income. Children might also have chores that they get paid for. Maybe you take the dog for a walk or take the trash out every week. Sometimes parents or guardians will pay the younger child to do a job around the house. That's called a chore. Lastly, you might earn income as a gift. Maybe for a special birthday, a life event, or even a holiday, you will be gifted money. Anytime we receive that money, we're talking about income. All right, let's see if we can use some of that vocabulary we just talked about. I have a scenario here, and I'm going to read it two times. But while I read it the first time, just listen to the scenario. When I read it a second time, we're going to pull out some key details. All right, here we go. Corey is a third grader at Owings Mills Elementary. Each week, his mom gives him $2 as an allowance. He earns another $3 per week for completing family chores. He has to walk the dog, take out the trash, and keep his room clean at all times. He can't wait to spend his money on a new video game. All right, now I'm gonna read it a second time, and when I read it a second time, we're gonna to pause to identify or highlight some key information. All right, here we go. Corey is a third grader at Owings Mills Elementary. Each week, his mom gives him $2 as an allowance. Let's highlight this part, $2 as an allowance. It's giving us a number and it's telling us a little bit about what Corey gets. But that's one good piece, let's keep reading. He earns another $3 per week for completing family chores. So let's make sure we, since we got $2 for allowance, we'll highlight $3 a week for family chores. And then it lists some of the chores he has, right? He has to walk the dog, take out the trash, and keep his room clean at all times. And then the last line says, he can't wait to spend his money on a new video game. So I see that word spend, and we've been talking about that. So spend his money and he wants a new video game. Very cool. So I have a couple questions that go with this scenario. Let's take a look. How much income does Corey receive each week? 
we can go back to the question and pull out that information. Corey earns $2 a week for allowance. He earns $3 a week for chores, which gives him $5 per week as his weekly income. Now, if I change that question and said, how much does he receive per month, would the number change? So let's assume there are four weeks in one month. How much income does Corey receive in one month? So then we would take the $5 that he makes per week times the four weeks of the month, which would give us $20 in income per month. Corey has an income of $20 per month. Now, if we go back to that scenario one more time, and we're talking about this idea of a new video game, which Corey, Corey was looking to save up for, is a new video game a want or a need? You're right, it's a want, because you don't need a video game to live. Great job. When we make a decision, there is always a consequence. Consequences aren't necessarily negative, but it identifies that when we make a decision, there are two distinct outcomes, benefits and drawbacks. Benefits are when good things come from making a decision. Drawbacks are the costs or impacts of making that decision. Let me give you an example. I grew up in Dundalk and I went to Grange Elementary. And this comes from when I was in the fourth grade. Each year, there was a great carnival that came. I, I think it came twice a year. And one day, I asked my parents for $20 so I could go to the carnival. $20 was enough for me to get in, buy a little food, maybe a drink, and then get a bracelet so I could ride the cool rides. Since my mom and dad were going to be working, they gave me the money in the morning. Well, during the day, my friends and I were playing as usual, and we all went around to our local store. Everyone was buying things that they wanted, and we purchased cards, for, like trading cards, for a game we were playing. I spent $16 of my $20 so I could still play with my friends. We played for the rest of the day, and then the afternoon came and we all went home to eat dinner. We all had plans to get back together to go to the carnival that night. I went home, I ate some dinner, and then I went to the carnival. I still had that $20 in my pocket, uh, I mean $4 because I spent some earlier. When I went to the carnival, I couldn't ride any of the rides and all I could buy was a soda. My night stunk. All of my friends got to have fun and ride the rides, but I couldn't. I was so angry. And I went home and I talked to my mom and dad. They asked me what happened to the $20 they gave me, and I shared what happened. This is when I learned about benefits and drawbacks. My decision had consequences. When I bought those cards, I was happy. It was a benefit that I got to buy the cards and then play with my friends. The drawback of that decision was that I didn't get to ride any of the rides at the carnival. Let's take another look of maybe a different example of benefits and drawbacks. Let's assume Corey from our scenario before goes to his favorite store with his parents. He has saved $10 and hopes to get a, that new $20 video game. While at the store, he sees a candy bar that he wants that's $2. He also chooses to buy soda for $2. After spending money on these goods, how far away is he from reaching his savings goal? And we can look this up by just adding together what he spent. He purchased the candy bar for $2, and that means from his original $10, we subtract two. Now he only has $8 left. Then he spends another $2 on soda. And that means we subtract another $2, but now we subtract it from the $8 he had left. That means he only has $6 left, and that's right here. So in order to get that $20 video game, we would have to take that 20 and minus the six, and now the difference is $14. That means he needs to get 14 more dollars to reach his savings goal. By making the decision to buy a candy bar and soda, Corey is now further away from reaching his goal. It'll take him longer to get there, and he might be a little sad about that. This is the drawback of making the decision to buy the candy bar and soda. The benefit of making the decision is that he gets to eat the candy bar and drink the soda he wanted. 
In the future, we will learn the term opportunity cost as it applies to the drawbacks of making financial decisions. All right, let's take another break real quick. Let's do a quick matching activity to match up that vocabulary we were talking about. Whenever I do matching, I always start with the right side. Uh, I start on this side because usually there's information that I have to read over here and it takes me a little bit longer to read on the right. So I read the, the most information first and then I just jot down the, the information on the left. So let's, let's check it out. Um, I see that the letter A says things we must have to live. I remember us saying that these were needs. So let's write in the A at needs, which is number three. B says to keep money to spend later. This sounds like savings. So I'm going to write a B in the savings uh, line. The money, C says the money we receive from other sources. I know that when we receive money, we call that income. And income's number five, so let's write the letter C in there. D says the purchase of goods and services. When we purchase something, we are spending money. Spending is number one. It's right in that D there. Lastly, we have the letter E, things people can live without. And we've talked a lot about it, and I just shared that story about the carnival where I was, uh, I had bought cards that I didn't necessarily need, but I wanted. Um, bad memory, I suppose. Let's just, uh, let's just jot in and make sure we put that letter E where wants are. Awesome. All right, I have a couple practice problems that we can use and apply benefits and drawbacks. So if you're following along with a piece of paper, consider writing your responses on that sheet of paper. You don't need to copy down the scenario, but just scenario one or scenario two. All right, here's the first one. Amira has been saving for a new watch that costs $50. Before going out with her friends, she takes money from her piggy bank. She chooses to spend $10 on a movie ticket and $10 on popcorn and soda. What is the benefit of making this decision? And what is the drawback of making this decision? Take 30 seconds to jot something down. If I was Amira, I would definitely benefit from this decision, right? Because I would benefit because I get to go to the movie and then I also get popcorns and a soda. And that sounds like fun. So that would be a, a, a benefit. The drawback is that she is getting further from her savings goal of a new watch. That means the drawback, the drawback is that it will now take longer for her to reach her, her savings goal. All right, let's try one more. Again, if you're following along with the sheet of paper, just jot down your responses. All right, here's one about Sam. Sam was invited to go to Chuck E. Cheese with two of his friends. He really wants to go, but he has been saving up for a new art set. Sam decides to save his money rather than go to Chuck E. Cheese. What is the benefit of making this decision? And what is the drawback of making this decision? Ah, yes, this one is a bit different. This time, Sam is giving up the chance to go to Chuck E. Cheese. That would be the drawback. The benefit of this would be that he still has money to purchase his art set. Benefits and drawbacks are important things to consider when we make choices. As we get older, the decisions we make will get mu have many more consequences or benefits or drawbacks. For example, maybe when we get old enough to buy a house or get a car, or maybe it's applying to the right middle school if you're going to a magnet middle school or a magnet high school or choosing the right college. We always have to be mindful of the benefits and drawbacks of our decisions and the financial impacts that they have on us. Today, we looked at what would motivate individuals to choose to spend or save so we could determine the benefits and drawbacks of making financial decisions. We did a great job looking at needs and wants as they would motivate us to spend or save money. Maybe we need water, clothes, or a new bed. We also know that we are tempted to spend money on wants, 
like trading cards or maybe something that isn't as important. Then we looked at how each decision we make has a benefit or drawback. I'd say this was a job well done. Have a great day, and I definitely look forward to seeing you next week.